Hello everybody, welcome on in. Today I've got my Rapier Blunderbuss PvP build, and this is basically a high burst damage mobility build that does a great job moving around the battlefield and has really good counters to common meta threats like Gravity Well and Ice Shower. The high mobility also makes this build excellent for anything like open world PvP where you can use that speed to either get away or chase an opponent down, and of course it's great if you find yourself outnumbered. I have a written guide on my website, pvpnewworld.com. There's a link down below in the description for you guys. Of course, there's gameplay in the last half of the video for you. And I've got some more gameplay of this video in a previous upload. I'll put the link down below for you guys too. Without further ado, I hope you guys are ready to look at a super weird attribute page for the build that you just saw some gameplay of. Let's jump right into it. A bit of a weird spread for a Rapier Blunderbuss build in order to get the most damage that I could out of it. I did a lot of testing on the PTR to kind of determine what would give me the best damage with this kind of a setup. I think that the Full Intelligence spread is also a viable option if you want to go for it, but hear me out why I did it this specific way. This build has primarily high Rapier damage, followed by a pretty decent amount of damage with the Blunderbuss, but the most important burst weapon on the spec is going to be the Rapier. So with the setup that we've got here, we really heavily benefit rapier based damage. Scaling off of dexterity and intelligence, we've got 200 points and 100 points here. Lots of nice damage there. The 50 points in strength definitely stands out as a little bit weird. That being said, we get the 5% bonus to our melee weapon light attacks. Rapier deals primarily damage with light attacks as you play it. So this is huge for rapier because this actually allows our light attacks to have pretty similar damage to if we had the 250 points in dexterity instead. But the big benefit of doing this is that we get those first 50 points in strength in order to give us a little bit more damage with the blunderbuss. Of course, with diminishing returns in this game, the first 50 to 100 points you put in are going to have the biggest impact out of all the points that you put in there. Now, taking a look at the dexterity side of things, it gets a little bit weird. Blunderbuss is an interesting weapon because it does scale off of strength and intelligence, but it doesn't really benefit a lot from most of the jump points in the strength and intelligence trees. In fact, it actually benefits a lot from the jump points in the dexterity tree, making it kind of a weird but workable pairing for a dexterity weapon. So the first one we got here is the increased chance to critical hit. Blunderbuss at base has a 2% critical hit chance, but it fires 6 pellets. With the increased 5%, we get a 7% crit chance on the blunderbuss, giving us something like a 42% chance to crit when we land all six pellets on the opponent. Now this game, I believe, has some sort of a pity crit system. If you land all six pellets with the blunderbuss and have that around 7% crit chance, more often than not, you will land a crit and proc the secondary perk on the blunderbuss, in this case being keenly empowered. Now, I definitely can't confirm that there is a pity crit system, but just from me playing the blunderbuss, I do notice that I crit a lot more than that 7% crit chance would suggest per pellet. Then finally, at the 100 points, we've got the 5% thrust damage, which benefits blunderbuss being a thrust weapon, and of course benefits the rapier for even more damage for our primary damage dealer. The 150 points giving us 10 less stamina cost on the dodge roll, massive for a light armor build because it allows you to pull more rolls off in quick succession, essentially giving you a greater distance that you can break from your opponent in a short period of time, and uh, you don't blow your stamina doing it. And then last but not least, we've got the 200 points for the 10% bonus backstab and headshot damage. Now the backstab is fantastic for rapier, but the headshot damage actually benefits a little bit on the blunderbuss here. Even though it shoots the buckshot, if you aim down the sight and you land a bunch of pellets on your opponent's head, not only will you get that guaranteed critical hit, but you get a little bit of bonus damage here too. Blunderbuss has a pretty low critical damage multiplier, but with the additional headshot damage and then the 100 point jump here, we can get to that 1.3 times critical multiplier which can actually give the blunderbuss the ability to deal more damage with crits against players even if they have resilient on. And then finally taking a look at the intelligence part of the damage here, intelligence is going to buff both the rapier and blunderbuss damage being the uh, secondary scaling for both of them. The first point here doesn't affect the build at all, but the uh, next point, 10% increase to critical hit damage, fantastic for the backstab rapier burst that this build has, and allows us again to get a little bit more damage on crits with the blunderbuss. Now, taking a look at the constitution here, 150 in con, this build is up in your opponent's face, it is a close quarters fighter more than anything, so I really recommend 150 con for this type of a light armor build. If you're playing something that's in the back lines or you don't plan on being outnumbered, you could go for less constitution in light, but because this build will find itself at the front and you will find yourself outnumbered to survive those incoming chain stuns and having a sniper on you, etc., 
this helps a lot not to mention the increased constitution value just gives you flat more healing on top of that 50 points in con here so now let's take a look at the gear i'm running on this build starting off with the weapons the rapier here is rogue and refreshing move and those are the two perks of choice. I've gone with the Gambit Gem on the Rapier because of the stat spread that we have being very heavy in Dexterity. Gambit is the best damage dealing option to give us more burst on the front bar with the Rapier. If you're playing a full Intelligence spec with this build, you might get better performance out of a T2 or T5 Elemental Gem, depending on the target that you're attacking. And then taking a look at the Blunderbuss, I've got Enchanted and Keenly Empowered, and I've got Gambit again on the Blunderbuss, as we don't have a huge investment in that uh, intelligence for this build. This is going to be the best damage increasing option. Enchanted, I'm pretty sure, is the best perk all around for damage on a Blunderbuss. They have a low crit rate and low critical damage, so Enchanted makes the most sense just for what the weapon does on average. And then Keenly Empowered, because of that 7% crit rate, Keenly Empowered procs so often on this build. You could run any Keen perk that you wanted here. I think Keenly Empowered is a really good choice because it allows the Blunderbuss to actually have some pretty decent damage on this build, even though we're not super heavily invested into the Blunderbuss damage. But you could go for something like Keen Speed if you want to favor even more utility. I think a Blunderbuss with Keen Speed would be pretty freaking stupid. Now, taking a look at the hat here, we've got a uh, Resilient Sundering Riposte light hat. And uh, Sundering Riposte being a fantastic perk for this build, just giving us more damage when we land uh, those Riposte on our opponent. And then taking a look at the next piece here, Refreshing and Resilient with Dexterity. Um, the next one here, again, Refreshing and Resilient. I'm just going to skip down to the boots here, Refreshing, Resilient once more. And then the only other different piece we have here is Resilient and Exhaustive Net Shot. Honestly, I think all of the effect adding perks for the different Blunderbuss skills that this build uses are really good options because they are all very good for PvP. So it's really just what you can get your hands on here. But if you're like me and you don't have full uh, golden gear, I think Refreshing Resilient is more than enough. And then just make sure you get at least that Sundering Riposte so you get that big burst with the Rapier. Now moving on to the necklace here, it is Health and Divine, a fantastic option all around for PvP, especially a light armor build, benefiting a lot from that additional healing and max health for more durability. And then on the ring, I've got Thrust Damage and Hardy with Intelligence, Dexterity, and a little bit of luck. Not the best ring, but I managed to pick this up for a cheap price. Thrust Damage, definitely the way to go. This will benefit both our outgoing damages. And then Hardy, I've talked a lot about this in the past. I think it is one of, if not the best perk that you can run on a ring in PvP. Giving you the additional stamina means you'll have more stamina to use in a short period of time. And that's a huge deal because you might have one extra roll where your opponent doesn't, allowing you to stay on top of them or break that uh, meaningful distance in the fight. And then last but not least, for the uh, earring, I've got Refreshing Toast and Regenerating. Both of these fantastic options just to up your incoming healing power while you're in combat. And then for the gems, I've got four Wilderness Ward and four Spectral Ward uh, between my equipment and my jewelry. This is going to give me a nice and even 10% damage reduction against all incoming types of damage. It's up to you if you want to invest a little bit more heavy in one type of incoming damage versus another. And then finally, you definitely want to have the best bullet that you can use for something like Outpost Rush. Outside of Outpost Rush, where you actually use ammunition and you don't just equip one bullet and then it allows you to use it unlimited in there, um, you might want to use a cheaper ammunition. It's kind of up to the user, but the better ammunition you can get, the more damage the Blunderbuss will deal. Again, since this build is not a primary Blunderbuss damage build, um, upping the damage as much as possible allows it to have more and more viable damage versus targets. So... It, this build in particular, I think, really benefits from going for a more powerful bullet if you can. And then consumables, always got to have them in PvP. We've got the Infused Health Potion, and then we've also got the Infused Regeneration Potion. Both of these have their own separate cooldowns. Very important for the incoming healing and just sustain in a fight. The Hardy Meal, always a good option, especially for a mobile build like this. We can break distance, eat the Hardy Meal in a safe location to get a little bit of additional healing power. If someone attacks you after you eat this meal, the healing will stop, however. And then I've got the Strong Gemstone Dust. I like this option a lot versus going for the uh, Oak Flesh Bomb, simply because you're weak against predominantly that powerful Elemental Mage. And uh, something like a Fire Mage and an Ice Mage... And then I've got the Strong Gemstone Elemental Dust, favoring the Elemental Damage Resist versus the Physical Damage Resist option here, simply because this build's weakness is a powerful ranged mage, and this will help us even the odds a lot. 
Now let's take a look at the weapon mastery on this build. I'm going to start off with the blunderbuss for you guys. And uh, yeah, I had fun building the blunderbuss. I played around a bit with uh, the setup that I wanted to use. And I really like how this ended for a utility slash damage focused blunderbuss setup. So taking a peek at the first ability here, of course, we got net shot. Um, net shot is one of, if not the best skills that blunderbuss has utility wise. It's got a pretty quick cooldown. It pushes your character quite far back, giving you a very good counter to a lot of common meta threats like Ice Shower and Gravity Well. On top of it, Net Shot will snare your opponent and it will add a dot to the opponent when you fully upgrade the barbed netting here, um, making it a good all-around ability offensively and defensively, especially for something like chasing down an opponent or getting away. The next ability I've got is the Claw Shot, and I opted out of taking the last point in the Claw Shot um, simply because of how I've set up the damage on this build. I'll get into why I didn't take this point when we talk a little bit more about the Unload passive here. But for the most part, Claw Shot has quite a few uses for this build. You can use it to pull yourself to your opponent, you can use it for a ranged immobilize as well, and you can also use it as a cancel to allow you to shoot two light attacks in very quick succession, giving this uh, build an actually pretty decent ranged burst damage with the Claw Shot uh, light attack combo. On top of it, when you use Claw Shot, you'll gain eight stamina every second for 10 seconds. This is insane for your stamina sustain, so it gives Claw Shot a use even if you don't hit anybody with it, just for that sustain. And then on, and then finally, the Combat Readiness passive here will allow you to reduce the cooldown of this ability by 2% for each pellet that you hit. And uh, this is a big deal because you'll be shooting a lot of pellets, especially when you use this combo successfully. Then the last skill we've got, of course, is Blast Shot. The big AoE field knockdown that this creates is nice. It has a bit of a wind-up time, but it is an AoE knockdown, which uh, can come in very handy, especially when you're outnumbered. And then I've only put one point in here to give us that rend when you use Blast Shot. I didn't invest in the Lingering Flow passive, simply because this build doesn't benefit a lot from a stationary speed buff like that. Um, if you're playing in a group, I definitely see more viability for this, but this build itself moves around a lot, so... You're not really going to be standing in this field at all. Now let's take a look how I kind of set up the damage here um, and the sustain of this. Starting off with the future endeavors, if you land five or more pellets in a single shot, you will restore one stam per pellet. Uh, Blunderbuss has crazy good stam sustain with Claw Shot already, so this just adds to it, which I really like. Run and Gun reloading gives you a speed boost of 40% that decays over one second. This basically just makes your reload speed the same as your regular walking speed. I think it's still a little bit slower, but really nice because a lot of uh, other gun weapons, like the musket, have a very slow reload speed and it slows your character down when you use it. The ramp is going to give us a damage boost of 4 seconds for 6 seconds every time we reload. And uh, deep load is going to make the last shot loaded in the blunderbuss deal 15% increased damage. That plays into why I didn't take the mobile overload passive here. And then we've got the fortifying aggression. Successful hits within 3 meters grant fortify 10% um, fortify for 2 seconds. And then last but not least, unload. The next shot fired within 6 seconds after triggering an ability will have 9 pellets instead of 6. So the reason I only want two shots in the blunderbuss is because that deadly claw shot combo, if we do a light attack, then claw shot, then cancel it with another light attack, it will get not only the additional nine pellets, but the 15% damage boost on those nine pellets too. Now taking a look at the uh, passives on the other side here, using an ability reduces all other ability cooldowns by 4% of the remaining time. Every pellet that is a headshot reduces all cooldowns by 0.5% as well. Then I've got the 10% increased damage to a target as long as you've not damaged them in the last 8 seconds. This is kind of nice because it gives you even more damage on that light attack claw shot light attack combo. And then last but not least, last chance for that 50% damage reduction if you're hit while below 50% health on a 30 second cooldown. This is just a fantastic survival passive in general for the blunderbuss. Um, a little bit situational with the longer cooldown, but a very very powerful damage reduction if you get bursted with the blunderbuss out. Now, taking a look at the rapier for this build, this is the rapier tree that you guys have seen a lot from me. I love playing the rapier, and uh, yeah, I, I would deviate to other skills, but this skill set is just superior for PvP. Not that the other skills are super bad. I think Flourish and Finish actually has a lot of viability with the double stagger. That being said, what am I going to drop for Flourish, right? So let's take a look at it. Of course, Riposte, the fantastic counter-defensive stun, 
where you uh, absorb an incoming enemy attack and then you turn around, counter stun them. You can roll behind them after reposting them and hit them with a fully charged heavy attack into a evade light attack combo. So huge, huge damage potential when you get that counter with repost. And of course, it is fantastic defensively when you use repost, even if you don't counter stun anybody. When you absorb that attack, you're briefly invulnerable. So it just allows you to have a little bit of uh, an damage absorbed for that moment. So just fantastic utility all around. Now taking a look at the next skill here, we've got Evade. Evade is the bread and butter of playing a Rapier, I think, in PvP. Not only does it allow you to iframe out of any action that you're doing, but you can follow it up with a light attack right away. Evade gives you momentary invulnerability, kind of like a dodge roll, and on top of it, when used with the momentum passive, it allows our next light attack to deal even more damage. This build benefits a lot from doing a lot of light attacks and dodge rolls. We have great stam sustain with evade as well. And the more light attacks that you land thanks to the crescendo passive, the more often you can use evade in a fight. All around a fantastic offensive and defensive ability for the rapier. And you'll see in the gameplay me use this skill quite a few different ways. And then finally taking a look at flesh. Flesh, the gap closer of choice. You and you can interrupt the gap closer with a light attack to get behind your opponent and deliver a vicious backstab. Honestly, Flesh is one of, if not the best gap closer in the game when it comes to dealing damage, because not only does it hit hard and hits twice, but you can force a position behind your opponent, which no other gap closer can really do. And if you do manage to land the kill with this skill, you get a huge cooldown reduction on it, basically allowing you to use it again. Now the rapier passives that I've chosen starting in the blood tree are very focused around reducing the cooldowns of rapier, especially since evade has uh, the uh, 12 second base cooldown cost now. Yeah, having uh, refreshing on and reduced cooldowns on the rapier in general definitely helps. So refreshing strikes for that reason. And I've got on guard as the only damage passive that I've chosen. You can choose between on guard, uh, desperation or perfectionist, whichever one you think you'll get more out of in the course of a fight. I prefer on guard in general. And then I've got controlled breathing, three stamina on any hit. Huge again for that uh, heavy roll dodge gameplay that this build has. And then I've got red curtains. Critical strikes reduce all cooldowns by 5%. Super, super important for the sustain of this build as uh, we're landing a lot of crits with the rapier. And then Swiftness for the additional speed on Rapier hits. I like this too because Rapier doesn't have a lot of reach, so this additional speed can help you just close that little bit of additional distance to ensure that your attacks land. And of course Momentum for that increased 30% damage on your next Light or Heavy after performing an ability. Yeah, big damage here. And uh, with the rapid cooldown of some of the Rapier skills, you can use this passive really, really well for bursting your opponent. All right, guys, let's get right into that PvP commentary. Both the clips for you guys today in Outpost Rush because, well, bullets are free here. The first fight here, we've got a uh, enemy musket player as well as a uh, hammer and great axe player. The hammer great axe player, very aggressive. I go for the repost a little early and just end up rolling out of it due to the long duration of that hammer uh, wind up stun move, just so I don't get hit by it. That would be a very bad stun to get hit with. And I go for some pressure on top of the enemy range player. There you see that light attack claw shot, light attack hitting him and taking a pretty sizable chunk of his health out just kind of showing off the uh, damage that we can do with this blunderbuss but there you see when we get behind him with the flesh big damage from the rapier unfortunately I eat that stun from the enemy hammer player and uh, the uh, gravity well explosion saves me from the stun so I'm able to get out of that go for another light attack claw shot light attack on that guy and with just the blunderbuss alone we we're able to put so much damage into him finish him off and then just go for a bit of a kite back behind the rocks here. It looks like an enemy musket player on the other side. Um, Hammer player still pushing forward here. He's going for those big stuns. Goes for the big uh, hit the ground stun again. And I just go for the riposte so that I can stay aggressive. The light attack into evade on him. And from behind the musket player switching to sword and shield. Hitting me with the gap closer into the stun. Thankfully I'm freed from that stun by the uh, I believe gravity well explosion from the hammer player. I'm not quite sure. Either way I get good damage on him with the light attack claw shot. Light attack hit him with the knockback and feed him one more shot. Almost bringing this guy down. And then I roll out of the uh, way of the hammer stun there. And hit him with one more shot with the blunderbuss to finish him off. Huge blunderbuss damage on that guy there. And the hammer player throws down the gravity well I go for the repost and somehow I'm able to use evade in repost but repost still went off 
kind of a little weird interaction with those skills there either way we got the counter stun and i'm able to evade uh out of harm's way and these guys are coming pretty aggressive towards me looks like an enemy blunderbuss player here um also looking to get some of that burst on me and uh i just start pushing towards the uh guy with the gun here he's got what looks like a spear a lot of different players kind of coming through this fight um some of them sticking on me and some of them peeling away but it looks like musket guy is back he's shooting me from the top there kind of taking chunks out of me so I decide the best thing to do is to get to a little bit more cover. This build, I think, doesn't do a great job if your opponent is a long-ranged fighter and they have a big open field between you and them. That being said, the build is fast, so you can close that gap quickly and get on top of them. And if you're close to the long-range fighter, they're much less effective. There you see an excellent riposte on that guy as he goes for uh, the Cyclone. And I just hit him with the heavy attack into the light attack to evade. Take out almost all his hit points with that huge combo. And he ends up going down, just kind of flexing that big rapier damage. And now it's just left uh, me and the enemy hammer, great axe player. We just kind of trade for a little bit, um, trying to get a good drop on him. He does a good job defending. And then the enemy uh, musket and sword and board player ends up coming back. He ends up wasting his stamina on the roll there. I go for the blunderbuss light attack claw shot. I should have just kept on the rapier there. Fed the guy the poke. It would have been uh, enough, I think, to take him down. And from behind, another blunderbuss player. He hits me with the stun. And uh, I go down, uh, unable to get back up and just go back outside to get a little bit of distance. The other player there didn't heal in time, so I fleshed through him, managed to get the kill on him. Now it's just me and the hammer guy again. Poor timing on my riposte there. Uh, good job from him to go and hold those heavies. So uh, we just kind of do a little bit of trading here again. He's doing a good job dodging my stuff. I'm dodging his stuff. He goes for that big uh, hammer smack there. I hit him with the light attack um, off the uh, stun there. I don't go for the claw shot. And the reason I didn't is because I wanted to save it. That guy's very tanky. More players coming into the fight here. So he's definitely not going to be my primary target. Um, enemy blunderbuss player pulling out the ice gauntlet though. Have to be very careful of that. There's the uh, gravity well coming down. I managed to roll just as the gravity well comes through there. And I break a little bit more distance again and uh, get the knockback on this guy here. Hit him with the claw shot, and I don't get the second shot because I didn't time it right. It ends up pulling me in, but either way, I managed to bait out a uh, counter stun on the riposte. Huge damage on him there, but unfortunately, a lot of enemy players converging, so I'm not gonna be able to capitalize on that really and uh, taking a lot of damage just from all the muskets kind of shooting at me here. I retreat to this spot here. Maybe not the best idea. The terrain isn't super ideal. And the gravity well comes down. The stuns come down. I managed to catch the riposte in time, go for the flesh, and then switch to the blunderbuss, go for the net shot to break as much distance as possible. And there's one more waiting around the corner. He hits me with the stun succession, finally lands that trap, and that's gonna hold me in place for the death there. Now I've got another fight for you guys here and this fight here actually um, showing off a little bit more of the defensive side of this build. I found the mobility on this build to be one of the best aspects of it and it does a really good job with a little bit of terrain just kiting out basically any type of opponent that you're fighting and uh, yeah so we're gonna jump into it two players kind of shooting at me here there you see an enemy bow player and an enemy blunderbuss player the enemy bow player I think is very dangerous to uh, this kind of a build if we don't line of sight him effectively and uh, deny him the additional range that he has over us so that's a big reason why we're using the pillars to just kind of kite out the damage and uh, the enemy blunderbuss player ends up staying on me the bow player goes away but we got more players coming in from behind there he goes for that big hammer stun I double roll because the uh, range of that hammer stun is actually really long and I've been caught by it quite a few times when I think it won't reach me and uh, there you see I go for the riposte obviously gonna go for a riposte standing in the middle of everybody like that and they end up uh, trying to go for a bit of damage but I managed to rotate through back behind the other side of the pillar here feeding them the light attack claw shot light attack um, missing a lot of my shots here this was a little earlier on in my blunderbuss gameplay so my aim improved a little bit with time. That's something I actually want to talk a little bit about with the blunderbuss. I found it to be one of, if not the most difficult ranged weapons for me to aim personally. Um, even though it's a close ranged weapon, and I think that has a lot to do with the fact that when people are close to you, they move across your screen a lot quicker, and it's a lot harder to predict which way they're going to go, especially in an open field situation. Uh, there you see though, I do manage to successfully land a nice few shots with the blunderbuss, and uh, this is the only guy left on top of me here. The other one decided that uh, I wasn't worth the time to chase. He ends up trying to go for the uh, gravity well into the counter stun with the blunderbuss there. I managed to avoid it 
And then I stay on top of him with the rapier, go for that flesh through him, and then uh, manage to land one last poke off the dodge roll to give me a little bit more distance there. Just as more players enter the fight, this guy goes for the ice shower. I knew it was coming, but I wasn't able to avoid it in time. It doesn't matter. I'm able to survive, get behind the pillar here, and uh, just waiting on the cooldown for my potions and stuff. I don't have any food or anything right now. So yeah, basically just trying to kite around until I can get that heal. There's the first potion, the regen potion also ready. Um, I definitely should have drank it. I don't know why I didn't, but I'm gonna fight this enemy blunderbuss player. He ends up pulling himself in with the claw shot. I roll out of it. The claw shot immobilize is very short, so you got a uh, you got enough time to roll out and not take damage from the rest of the blunderbuss combo if they decide to pull themselves to you. And there it is from the left, the blunderbuss blast shot hitting me with that knockdown stun. Um, but I'm able to recover from it without taking too much serious damage and uh, get a good repost on the enemy player there as he throws the gravity well down. Um, if you're going to get that repost in the gravity well, such a good call because uh, players get very aggressive if you just stand in it. And the enemy blunderbuss player um, ends up dodging my blast shot there. And uh, I try to go for some damage, get the flesh to try to get behind him. He ends up going for uh, a nice little maneuver. Hammer player from behind, but I just get the repost in time. Feed the uh, light attack net shot, light attack or a hook shot, sorry, and I just about bring that player down. Not quite enough damage. He's able to heal up. I'll let you guys enjoy the last bit of this fight as I say goodbye. Of course, you can find that written guide on my website, pvpnewworld.com. I do my PvP gameplay live on Twitch, so uh, check out my Twitch if you want to catch that stuff live. And you can give me a follow on Twitter if you guys want to keep up to date with what's going on with me. I would love to feature another episode of the New World Top 5 Battles, but I need some more clips from you guys. If you guys have some awesome fights that you think are good for a Top 5, please send them to Christopher at pvpnewworld.com. And I feature builds as well, so don't be shy to send that my way either. This show is sponsored by What The Fast. They are a VPN for gamers that can give you better ping to your favorite games, especially if you have poor ping to start. And finally, a massive thank you to all of my patrons on Patreon for supporting the show for all this time. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching. As always, have a great night, everyone, and I'll see you next time.